hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about genes and alleles and the difference between the two and gave examples to show that difference. What we'll do in the next video is cover this stop point, which is distinguish between homozygous and heterozygous genotypes in monohybrid crosses. So what we have to do with this, we have to know the difference between homozygous and heterozygous genotypes. So first I'm going to talk about what we've been talking about so far in terms of the terminology. So what we call things. Terminology is a different word for what we call things. And we called this example. So if, for example, we have the parent generation and they're the pure breeds. So the pure breeds. We call them pure breeds because they have both the genotype. So the genotype was what kind of alleles were inside the actual that make up the genes. So we said that these ones had two alleles which were big G and big G. So only big G alleles. So we said this one was a dominant one. And it also had only the one type which made it pure. Whereas the other one was small g, small g. And we said that only had the small g ones which was meant was also pure. It was recessive but still was pure. So we use the word pure for the, to go for this. And then we cross these two. So we crossed your pure green with a pure yellow. And then we got the F1 generation. Now we said that these were the mono hybrids because they were not pure. They had different types of alleles. So they had one green and one ye yellow allele. And mono meant one. And hybrid meant that it's a combination. So we were looking at one trait, so the difference between yellow and green peas. And we found that these ones, the F1 generation, had a combination. Their, their genotype was a combination of alleles. So had one green allele and one yellow allele. So we said these were the monohybrids, and then we crossed them. So we crossed them, and then we used that Punnett square to get this. We found that the ratio we had genotype-wise, we had one dominant green, one dominant yellow, uh, one dominant green pure breed, one recessive yellow pure breed, and two hybrids. So yeah, we call the actual these ones, the double G ones, called them the pure breed because they were pure. This was the dominant version. This was our hybrid again, so our monohybrid, because it had different types of combinations. Whereas this one was like also pure breed, but it was obviously a recessive type. That's what we called all these things when it comes to the last couple of years. But now I'm going to show you the scientific terminology. So this terminology was often used by the, the previous ones, so the pure breed and the homo hybrid. That was often used by Mendel himself. But since now, we've just gotten a new type of terminology to explain that. So. The words we use now are actually homozygous and heterozygous, which are the actual words given in your dot point. So homo means same, and zygous, that comes from the word zygote, so that's to do with fertilization, fertilization. So that means after fertilization, so after we have a new plant that comes, that plant itself only has the same type of genotype. And if we look at the, the idea of that pure breed that we mentioned earlier, that pure breed, that falls under the category of homozygous because so these plants, you know, their actual offspring gave them only the same type, so only one type. So homo means same. So these have all have the capital G and these have all of the small g. So after fertilization, these plants have only one type of actual allele as opposed to different types. So we call these a homozygous. Anything that has the same type only is homozygous. Whereas heterozygous, hetero means different. And in the word zygous says the same, that's fertilization. So we call them, we used to call them the monohybrids because you know, they had different types of the one trait. But we can also call them heterozygous because they have different types of alleles after fertilization. So we fertilized the two pure breeds and after the fertilization the offspring have this combination. They have one capital G and one small g. So here we have different types of alleles. And that's for all of them. So they would have all of them. So all the F1 generation were heterozygous. Heterozygous. And then what we did is we crossed the F1 generation. So we crossed the F1 generation here with each other. And we've gotten again these numbers here, not numbers, but the actual letters. 
and one of them would have been a homozygous, two actually, one here this is a homozygous because it has only G, this is also homozygous because it has only small g, and these here are our heterozygous, heterozygous because they have different types of alleles. And we see this one is homozygous dominant, and we'll go over those words again in the next video as well, and this one is homozygous recessive, and these were the heterozygous. So distinguish between the terms homozygous and heterozygous genotypes. Genotype was just what kind of alleles were in the actual made up the genes, and homozygous, homo means same, zygous means after fertilization. So these plants have the same type, only one, the only one, so same, the only one type of allele after they have made, after they were fertilized. So these are the parents, but their parents, their parents, so parents before, gave them the same type of alleles. So they're pure breeds. But then when we actually crossed them, when we crossed them, we made the F1 generation. Now the F1 generation was something called heterozygous. Hetero means different, and zygous means after fertilization. So after we fertilized the pure breeds together, what would happen is we created just these here, which were the ones which have different types of alleles. And that makes sense because they would go, we would have gotten one allele from father, one from mother, and that would give us a big G and small g. So they're different now. So the, all the F1 generation were heterozygous. They had different types of alleles. And then when we crossed, so now we crossed the F1 generation with each other, what happened is some were heterozygous and some were homozygous. So we had one, which was this one here, when we had both the big G alleles from the different plants come together to make a dominant homozygous plant, the green one. Then we had two that got both one small g and one big g, and they made a heterozygous plant. And then we got one which got both the small g's from the different plants to make a double g, small g, which is your recessive homozygous plant. So here we have two homozygous and, and two heterozygous ones. Hope this was useful. Thank you for watching.